Hey guys, just giving you some fair warning here. Um, this video is going to contain some graphic scenes. I'll be skinning and butchering a deer. Hey guys, welcome to Idaho Family Outdoors. Well, today we're going to be working on that deer a little bit more. We're going to get her cleaned up and get the skin off her, get her parted out and uh, cut up, wrapped up, put away in the freezer. Anyway, hope you guys enjoy this video and don't forget to like and subscribe. Hey, make sure you guys got some really sharp knives just before you start this job. It's going to make your life a lot easier. Well, sorry I didn't get any footage of uh, getting her all field dressed out there, but, you know, it was getting dark. We needed to get home. But anyway, we got her hung up and uh, let her chill overnight. I, you know, normally I would let her hang for a few days, but time crunch being, you know, with work and everything, so... Yeah, it was, it was cool enough. I just hung it overnight just to make sure the meat got nice and firm before we start. Well, the first few cuts I'm going to make are around uh, each hind ankle. Then I'm going to make an incision down the inside of each thigh. That's going to continue all the way down into the main body cavity. So as I do that, I'm also going to be uh, working on the front skin there, uh, down the body incision, all the way down each side of the stomach. Just kind of nice smooth cuts pull your skin away as you as you work your way down just kind of take your time and do it right and try not to cut through the skin well my next step I'm just gonna work the skin loose along the uh, body cavity just taking your knife and going right between the meat and the skin then I'm gonna do the same kind of incisions I did on the back I'm gonna go around each each knee there and connect it to the uh, to the body cavity just slice the skin open and then work the skin off each leg and pull it free well, now we got to get the knee or the legs off there. So you're gonna take your knife, cut around each knee, and you know try to hit those tendons. And then you're gonna take the knee or the leg, and you're gonna bend it the way that uh, the leg actually naturally bends, and just twist it and give it a pop. It'll come free. And then you just take your knife, you just finish trimming the last couple uh, tendons that are connecting it there. So you don't need a saw or anything. To take the legs off. Then just go ahead and I'm just gonna work the skin the rest of the way off the legs. Get all you know all four limbs cleared of uh, skin and ready to, to come off. I'm just gonna continue working the skin on the inside of the body cavity here. So you see how I just give it a pull, just give it pressure, and just you're not really cutting sawing so much, you're just gliding your knife up and down in that uh, that membrane in between the uh, skin and the meat. Well, once you get to this point, you're pretty you're pretty much home free. So you've got all the skin worked off each leg. So now you're just ready for the, the back end. I just kind of work the skin down a little bit. You see, I'm just gonna trim down around, around the, uh, the back end. Then I'm gonna take my knife. I'm gonna give that tailbone just a little whack. That'll just separate the bones. Once you get down past the tail, uh, just grab it by the tail or grab by the back and just force it right on down. It should peel right off. And then I'm going to take it all the way down, just keep working it off the neck. And I like to take the skin all the way to the base of the skull so I can, you know, keep as much of that neck meat as possible. And then just trim all the way around the, the hide and, and you're good to go. Well, once the skin's off it, uh, I just give it a quick hose down just to knock off any of the, you know, little hairs and stuff that are going to be on there. I'm going to rinse it again as I, you know, as I'm cutting it and putting it away, I'm going to be... You know, constantly cleaning it, picking off hairs. But uh, yeah, you know, for best success, you want as clean a meat as possible. It's with anything else. I mean, you know, that hair and all that stuff. You know, it's not only unappetizing. You know, it can actually leave some um, off flavors in your meat. Well, I didn't get much footage of uh, quartering this deer up, but I'll kind of just talk you through it. The front shoulders are really simple. All you're gonna do is just kind of pull the pull the legs out right there in the armpit just start cutting down through the meat and there's no actual like ball joint it's just a scapula that that connects there to all the muscle tissue so you're just gonna work that muscle out and the uh, just keep sliding your knife and the, the front shoulders will come right off and then with the hind quarters you're just gonna uh, same thing just start the knife on the inside work your way down to that ball joint once you're at the ball joint, just cut, cut around as much as you can to expose the joint. Then uh, push the knees out, you know, spread the legs out. 
and the uh, the joints should pop and then you can just cut whatever you know connecting tissues left well this here's my process I like to take just sawzall and I cut off each each slab of ribs and uh, this year I'm just doing big chunks we figure we'll uh, cut smaller steaks and stuff off the roast as we need them so I'm just you see here I'm just uh, parting up the spine I'm leaving the back straps attached so we can cook bone in roast and these here are the hind legs and this year I just did the, the hind legs I only I did in two parts a bone in roast and a boneless roast and uh, the front shoulders I'll just kind of cut them right in half also and have a nice big fat roast with those two yeah, as you can see, I don't have much waste going on here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just, that hip section, it's got a lot of meat on it. So it's gonna be a, a chunk of the stew pot. And then these two here, these are the, uh, these are the prime rib roast. I'm just gonna clean them up a little bit, get the membrane off. But I'm leaving the spine and the, uh, the ribs attached. One of them I'll do whole as a, you know, prime rib roast. The other one, I'm just gonna cut the spine out, leave the bones attached, so it's like a bone in roast. Well, once you get all your meat cut up and you get your, you know, all your steaks cut up the way you want them and your roasts, and it's time to wrap it up. And I use just the regular, the, the Reynolds freezer wrap. And I'll put the meat on the paper at one corner and I'll, I'll roll it diagonally across to the other corner. So after one complete roll, then I'll flip the, the corner, you know, the side in. And then I'll do another half roll and flip the side in on the other side. And then the larger pieces or stuff that might be in the freezer for a while, just I go ahead and double wrap it, keep the uh, air out there, you know, out of it as much as possible. But by doing it this way, I've had I've had meat in the freezer two, three years, and have never had anything get freezer burnt. You know, one of the greatest joys of my life is uh, using every moment as a teaching or a learning opportunity, and I try to teach my kids about hunting and where their food comes from, teach them to be ethical hunters. But we use, we use all the, you know, everything we do outdoors, we use as a, a time for our family to be together, to have fun, enjoy each other, and just learn to love nature. As you can see from our photos, our family really loves the outdoors and it brings us together. I encourage you to take your family out in the outdoors and, you know, just enjoy a lake, go fishing, hunting, whatever you like to do. Well, I hope to see you guys next time. That's all I have for today. Get out and enjoy the outdoors. Don't forget to like and subscribe.